Good morning. How's it going? Good. That should be all right. It's just the biggest thing I've ever seen. It's like more people than I've ever seen concentrating on one thing at a time. But it would be up there a bit just because of the scale of it. Yes. If you look at it from, I think, a wide shot, you'd see an arc. Perfect, okay, great. The atmosphere is just so friendly and, like, welcoming. It's backwards. Oh, you're saying, and you're looking into it. <laughs> it's also really lovely to see the whole cast come together and to know that I'm, like, the new girl, but, like, part of that same team, part of that same family. It makes the bigness of, of this film a little bit more personal. Marshal positions, please. Right, here we go. Okay. Please set and go, Janet. Action. Action horses. Rough landing. Have seen worse. I've seen better. My first day of Star Wars was definitely memorable. It's like a stimulation overload. It was just like all of the things, like so many people, so many animals, <laughs> so many flies. <laughs> all the flying ants rise up from the ground and decide that it's their time to, you know, do whatever they got to do in the air. <laughs> and bugs, man. It was funny on set, you know, when stuff like that happens, we all kind of just react in a normal way, laugh by and keep on moving. They swarm you, they ate you. They were stuck everywhere. They got caught in my fro. Um, it was a lot. <laughs> that's that's filmmaking. Like you can't control those things, and like, but you still get the job done. Unfortunately, our stormy planet isn't quite so stormy at the moment, so sadly, <laughs> we're waiting out the sun. Just the practicality of working under those conditions, you know, there are different issues that that creates, challenges that, that you know, you have to overcome. Hey, so we're going to give up in this shot, because it's never going to get cloudy, and it's going to keep getting more and more front lit. So we'll bail on this shot, do it another time. Which means it shouldn't go down below to the low level. Here we go, clear frame, and we are rolling. Crane action. Seven of them are heading up the hill. And they see out into the stormy madness beyond, and they see the wreck out that way. One of the ideas JJ brought back to episode 9 that initially he had thought of in the early days of episode 7 was going to a crashed piece of the Death Star. I was just fascinated with the, the question of what is it to live in the aftermath of everything that we saw in the original trilogy. So the idea of pieces of things that we had seen that, that had been blown apart. There was just something that was kind of haunting about it and kind of beautiful. It was one of those things that felt like an idea that you have suddenly finds its purpose. For a long time, we knew that there was going to be a moment in the story when we are going to see the Death Star. First thing we kind of wanted to do is go up into the archives and take a look at the original model for this star. Look at this weird core thing. And then we can get some of that into our uh, approach to Ray. So we went up, took a bunch of photos. We wanted to really understand the curvature that houses uh, the dish, and then the texture itself, 
the texture of the Death Star is just as identifiable. You can see these kind of banding, which when you get really close, you understand, oh my God, one of those bands is actually the trench that Luke flies down. We came across a really big issue in that it is completely ridiculously huge and found out that it was about 90 miles across. It's too deep to fit in the ocean. It's too tall to fit into the atmosphere. So we found out that we could just barely fit the dish way out on the horizon. That we're pretty happy with. And JJ looked at it and he kind of said, it's a little too convenient that we just happened to come across the dish. So we kind of reset. Maybe you would have just a piece of the shell with a little bit of the dish left in there to hopefully recognize it as what it is. From the sky, BB-8. It's a bad place. From an old war. And then she'll pull out the blade and watch it widen out. Even while we were dealing with these big epic things in this movie, we found that the smallest details could sink you. Like the way that the blade interacts with the next stage of the journey. Trying to get that right became a real challenge. This one here, he was talking about being on leathers or, you know, so when it was flat, you'd on the sunlight, you right. literally see all the way mm -hmm. through. It could just be much more of a sink than a slab or tablet. To be honest, the scrolls, it feels like a physical object. Right. I don't know. Yeah, ah, this thing. You know, this particular item, it's just been something we've been kind of, not kind of struggling with, I think it's just struggling with the whole idea of where it leads, just because it's such a story point. If the right idea showed up, it would, it would actually help the story, so it's helpful to look at these, but I don't know if any of these are the right idea. It would have been, we're saying it was made after the, after the event, Second Death Jedi, Star. Yes. after the Second Death Star, to pass on the information about where the Wayfinder was to other Sith. Like, would it have to have been hardier? Because, you know, it would have had a pass from hand to hand to hand. But it's like this. We've all seen knives have a shape. If that cool design happened to have a function, it was a map. What are options for ways that things could, could be pulled out from, or extracted from, or removed from, or adjusted on a knife? I mean, I was imagining it's sort of something where it's like, if this came down, it would be one yes. thing. Well, and I just love the arrow. So you go, that's where it is. That's cool. That's cool. The Wayfinder's there. For the interior Death Star, JJ wanted this to sound like this creepy haunted house. Scary winds, creepy metal creaks, weird whistling sounds. And so we just kind of by accident happened to find this structure that was made out of uh, shipping containers. So it was a really windy day and it was the craziest sound when we were inside, all that metal and creak and banging. It was like, oh, th this is the Death Star. This is exactly gonna work. The force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. You have that power too. Of course, I'll be with you. Always. Oh,